Hello and welcome to Com or MGMT 1101. At this point, I hope that you have read the news post for this week. There'll be a news post every week, so that's where you'll have your start here. Uh, as well as checked out the course resources listed in that news post to uh, to review first, such as the syllabus, meet the team, including my intro, uh, as well as just kind of general overview of how this course is going to work. This first video is going to be a little bit more of an intro uh, to outline some of our key resources and also let you know that the way this course is set up is that it is asynchronous online for the most part with the exception of your final exam. We'll talk more about that in a moment. Each video will be set up as a mini lecture video, which really means that we're going to take everything that I would cover in a week or in two you know, typically 80 minute classes, and I'll break them up into mini lecture videos, some mini videos uh, that would all together add up to approximately the amount of time, 160 minutes that you would have in class in a week. However, that does not mean necessarily that there will be 160 minutes worth of videos, but rather within each mini lecture video, there may be one or two times or maybe none, where I might say, hey, pause the video now, think about this question, give it an attempt, and then unpause, and we'll walk through the answer. So at that point, I would assume that you would pause it and work through. However, you do not have to. I would like you to, I feel like you would get the most out of this course, but pretty much everything except for the deliverable with marks are optional. So there's a very reasonable floor of what you have to do, and then there's you know, different resources that you can do to help you maximize your grade in this course. If your goal is to not maximize your grade, but rather to optimize at, you know, a C or uh, a B or whatever level, um, you do you. Uh, similarly, somebody might need to work really, really hard and utilize all the resources, and maybe their definition of success will be, you know, reaching for that B. Again, I'm not here to judge. Um, also, somebody might you know, take all of our mini lecture videos and um, you know, speed them up and listen to me on 2x. Whew, I mean, okay, I talk relatively at a quick pace, so if you want to listen to 2x, that's on you. Alternatively, if you'd like to listen to me on a 0.25 or 0.5, that's here for you as well. Anyways, here's your course. I hope you make it um, the best course that will suit your needs, and myself and my team are here for your feedback along the way. I want to point out one thing. If you have questions, we have a number of resources for you to answer your questions. Um, one is that I didn't actually mention here, and that's the news posts, the weekly news posts. That'll be really to say, hey, what's due this week? What do you have to do? What um, should you do? As well as what is the upcoming week looking like? So you can kind of, you know, have that, I'd say like accountability item. As well, for questions, each week on those news posts, I'm going to post uh, a Calendly link to one of our team members where you'll have the option to have self-booking teams meetings. So each time is uh, 15 minutes. You can feel free to come by yourself or maybe with some of your classmates and you're welcome to ask um, us one, uh, one or you know, a few questions about the course. So this will be kind of live. You have to self book them each week using that link and um, it's first come first serve and there's typically about two to four hours worth of um, meeting appointments at various times throughout the week. So book your time and talk to one of our team members. We'll also have the discussion boards. And so the discussion boards will be available for you um, via Brightspace. And that will be where you post any question you have regarding either the upcoming tests, there's kind of a test form, as well as uh, the uh, content. So I'm gonna pull that up and just show you what that looks like right now. All right, so this is what you will see, except you'll see the actual announcement that will be scheduled for probably about five minutes after the course opens on Tuesday. Um, okay, so to go to the discussions, we you, discussion boards, you'll click here, and all of these have been set up so that you have the ability to post anonymously. Um, I ask that where possible, you select um, you know the item that is most applicable to your question, uh, and as well as I suggest that you subscribe. So I've already subscribed to each of these. You press subscribe, and then in your settings, you can set up, let's see, um, getting these. Oh, I always I always do this, sorry. 
So then in your settings, your notifications, you can set up you know, what you want to be sent to you uh, and how. So for example, I set up that I want discussion boards and I want the news feeds and the announcements emailed to me. And I put my email up here and then that's how I get those notifications. But I also need to subscribe. So that says, if you are subscribed, that's where it'll send to. And then I actually have to subscribe to these. So if I click up here, that means that I subscribe to all of these. And then say, for example, I really don't want to subscribe to this one, I can just unsubscribe from each individual um, board. You do know, the same thing for the mini test and the final exam. So again, um, you know, if you have a question, feel free um, to post here and myself or one of our team members will be um, answering your question within 24 to 48 business hours. So business hours just means Monday through Friday. So if you post late on Thursday, expect an answer by late on Monday at the latest. And it'll probably be a little sooner. We are pretty keen to help you on a timely basis. That said, um, you know, sometimes you have some tricky questions and we need to look into it. Uh, okay, going back to the course home, I might as well show you that all of these mini lecture videos you will have already seen are available in, under our content page. And so they'll be here on lectures. Um, I'll be posting the lectures by Sunday night, the uh, before your Monday start of the week. So you know, within like four hours before the start of the week, and that's because I record them on a weekly basis because we need to um, make sure that if anything comes up in the course or we need to make any adjustments, that is, we need to remove any materials because I don't know. Seven hurricanes happened, which kind of happened last fall, not quite seven, but two big ones. Uh, then we might remove material because our intent as instructors, as profs, is to make sure that you have a rigorous and uh, thorough education, but that if there are extenuating circumstances, we're not just bombarding you more, 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 squish, squish, squish. We really do want to keep in mind um, that this course is tough enough already without introducing those outside elements impacting everyone. Okay, so I'll also point out that our live Q&A, um, you will see the time that is in the news post and then click in here and there'll be different uh, sessions scheduled each week and you'll be notified of that Monday morning. Mini tests you will access here as well as the problems and solutions as noted in your syllabus will be outlined here. All right, I'm gonna go back to the slides. I mentioned the live Q&A, and that is another place that you can ask questions. So uh, there will be one question pulled from the problem set uh, for your weekly kind of homework. And um, one of our team members, uh, one or two of our team members will be going over that question, answering it, as well as leaving time for the remainder of the hour for you to ask your questions. So again, this is um, virtual, it's live, and it's an ability to ask questions um, throughout the course. So the rest of this mini video, this first one, is a quick introduction, a quick reintroduction, who is your prof, me. Uh, we're gonna talk about a syllabus review, how am I graded, and then I'm gonna let you know that, of course, accounting is objectively the best major. But you probably shouldn't major in it. So if you wanna <laughs> listen to uh, me rationalize what the heck goal number three of this mini video is, stick around till the end. If none of these are of interest to you, then please, I will see you in the next video. All right, so a bit about me. LinkedIn version that you would have received in the intro video is that I have my uh, education master's, I'm a chartered professional accountant and a chartered accountant. I am firm trained and was the CFO of a public company uh, by 25. So very grateful to my education as well as mentors along the way. Since then, um, after that, probably subsequent to that role, I became a location independent consultant at, in both education and financial reporting, and that led me to my current role uh, six years ago as a professor at Dalhousie, which I love, 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 love. Um, my coffee shop version, uh, love coffee, like cats, 
I much prefer beaches to mountains, uh, although coming from Alberta, that is a hot take, but that's why I'm in Halifax. And I value a sense of humor. Notice, it doesn't need to be a good, quote, sense of humor, because what is a good sense of humor? Um, I like people that are themselves authentic, and if something is funny to you, it'll probably be funny to other people too. I start off my intro classes by telling people, uh, telling the students that I like it when they have right answers. But I love it when students have wrong answers. So we can walk it back, right? When you have right answers, that's cool. Um, maybe you know the, knowledge, know the item and you're telling me and then you can kind of confirm your right knowledge. But, or maybe you're testing it out and, or perhaps you guessed. But when you have wrong answers, what that means to me is that you tried and you had the guts to say something out loud and you weren't quite there, but it's likely based on something. So now we get to, I get to understand as a prof, okay, where did that answer come from? And then I get to walk and guide you to the right answer. And I know that as a student myself, and I'm a lifelong learner, whenever I get something wrong, I'm like, oh good. Because then it'll probably stick in my mind a lot better. You know, I have, I have a little bit of stress of like, oh no, and then it's like, oh, I was really close or somewhat close to the right answer. And this is how I get there. So like right answers, love wrong answers. Uh, it's all about effort. It really is about effort um, in, in university, in life, uh, and definitely in this classroom. Show up and try, we're here for you. And yet I acknowledge, of course, uh, that grades to students are like paychecks to professionals. We like to be acknowledged for the hard work that we put in. So what, um, what is the remuneration in this course? You have 13 adaptive assignments, and if you read the syllabus, you would notice that your two lowest marks, including if you don't even try them, so the non-attempts are considered to be a low mark, That'll equal 20%. You will have five mini tests throughout the term and you'll get to drop one. Those will make up 30%. And then your final exam is in person, paper-based in December during the exam period and that'll be worth 50%. You have to pass the final exam in order to pass the course. Uh, so this has been the same for the past number of years, and I will say that last year, uh, oh, my heart got broken. So uh, there was this one student, and they would show up to class, and they would, um, they seemed to be very comfortable with the material, and then in the third week, they showed up to one class, and then I saw them once more throughout the semester. So I kind of assumed okay, like they're doing well, they have other classes that they're struggling with, they chose that they, their resources, their time is better spent elsewhere, fine. No problem. This is an uh, adult level education, we're dealing with adults, so that's an adult decision, I support that. I uh, show up into the final exam, she calls me over about 20 minutes in and is in, like crying. And she said, I can't answer any questions. And I was like, okay, um, well, give it a try. And she's like, I did try. And I was like, okay. And I said, part marks, like, you know, do what you can for part marks. And she's like, I don't know any of this. So I said, okay, great. Um, this class will be offered next semester. Um, and would you like me to take your paper? And she's like, yes. And I was like, this is a really, really like defining moment. No blame, no shame. Um, you know what you need to do next time. And I know that you'll do it. And she nodded and she walked off. So I bring up these stories not to make anybody feel bad and definitely not to make her feel bad, but I, I get the sense that she, you know, at one point felt very comfortable with the material and at other points, um, you know, um, had other priorities throughout the term. There's a lot going on for, for you, for all of us, for, for everyone. Um, and if you, so my suggestion to you would be if you're going to miss a class, just don't miss two. And now that they're recorded, uh, you know, if you need to spend some time catching up, go back and catch up. Uh, but try to stay on pace each week. And if you're gonna miss some videos, that's fine. You can always go back. But just try to keep up with the course as best as possible because it really is, um, it can be kind of a, a very defining moment in that final exam in December.
Okay. Alternatively, though, like I've had students that really struggled at the course for the first couple weeks and then found their groove, found like, yeah, it's going to take some work. It's going to take some regular practice. And then they showed up to the final exam and they finished on time or early. They scored like 80 or 90 percent and ended up with an A or an A plus in the course. So it happens um, both ends of the spectrum and every item in between. Do your best and um, we're here for you. There is a required textbook for this course. It's the ninth edition available in your bookstore. You can also get that right in Brightspace and I'll show you right now. Okay, so back in Brightspace, you can go to eTexting course and um, if you click on this link for the first time, you will be brought to your um, outside course. And so because I've already registered in it, it shows my, my textbook. Um, my student resources and then those are my prof resources but for you it would show um, a kind of a window and it's where you can buy the um, Wiley Plus online. If you buy Wiley Plus online without the textbook from the bookstore you will get all of these resources including the e-textbook but if you um, want the printed loosely copy you will also get all of these items as well. Just when you click in to um, this course right here. You would then have to put your code that you get from the bookstore. Alternatively, you can buy the e-textbook and those other course resources directly after clicking this link. So it's either put in a code or it's purchase um, effectively that code from this link. Either way, you cannot just go to wiley.com and buy that textbook um, from the slides. Let's see. Let's go back. You cannot just go to the books, um, like any bookstore, go online and buy this because um, in Brightspace, there's all this code and stuff. And in the back, it brings you right directly into um, this course where I have set up the mini tests. I've set up your, um, your mini tests. <laughs> I have ah, mini tests. I have your adaptive assignments. So all these things are linked. And so you really do need to buy it and either put in the code from the bookstore or buy the e-text here. Otherwise, you don't get access to all of this stuff. Okay. And if you have any problems, please, please, please do not hesitate. Click here and you can help troubleshoot your own problem or talk to a Wiley rep. Okay, so back to the course, one more item. So you know where I said accounting is the best major? Why do you think I said you probably shouldn't major in it? Well, it's because, um, you know, in the past, Chuck Liddell, he was an accounting major. He graduated from, um, let's see, California Polytechnic with a Bachelor of Arts in Business and Accounting. And he went on to be an MMA uh, champion in the UFC. So, you know, it can be pretty dangerous when you become an accounting major. All right, silly, silly jokes aside, uh, the reason why I said uh, you probably won't be an accounting major is because just statistically, uh, we do not have 100% of our Bachelor of Commerce or our Bachelor of Management students becoming accounting majors, but rather we have about 40% of the Bachelor of Commerce uh, students who become accounting majors. So, you know, that's why probably most of you won't become one, but I'm bum bum, you know. <laughs> so, um, however, I will say that regardless of your major, regardless of your path in life or your goals, I would encourage you, similar to Warren Buffett, to get fluent in accounting. Accounting is the language of business, according to Warren Buffett. I would love nothing more than for you to be fluent. See a number, know where it came from, know what it means, know the story of that number. Financial statements, that translates the story of the business. Where did that business come from and where are they likely to go? Where are they struggling? Where are their triumphs? Should you invest in this business? Should you become employed by this business? Uh, should you, you know, partner with this business? Get fluent. Uh, and hey, Warren Buffett was an accountant, but Chuck Liddell was? Interesting. Anyways, so that's advice from Warren Buffett. Here's some advice from me make money and make a difference or whatever your definition of success is. Uh, I find that most people uh, are allergic to numbers and that might be a little bit, 
Hmm. Counterintuitive because you're in a business school, you're in a faculty of management, a lot of people like numbers around here, but it's been my experience as a consultant that if you can get nice and cozy with numbers, um, you know, you can actually make a pretty dang good living off of, you know, translating those numbers in the language that you are fluent with. So I say most people are allergic to numbers, treat them and charge them accordingly. And I say that with love and kindness because you know, being able to go out there and make your own opportunities, you can choose. Do I, you know, take the contract that will require a lot of hours and in the office? Do I take the contract that is less profitable but allows me to travel around the world? Um, do I find a contract or make an opportunity for myself that looks like a combination of that or something else? The tools that you have will allow for you to build the skill set add value and design your life accordingly. At this point, I would welcome any questions you have on this intro video, this mini lecture video number one. I like to set a foundation um, and then I like to build on it. So this is the first video, no content. The next video will have content. I welcome any questions in the live Q&A uh, on the discussion boards or during the Calendly office hours. Thank you so much and I'll see you in the next video.